So I'm making a game engine called Hazel, and one of the best ways to actually make a game engine, to develop and add new features to it, is by making a game. Because if you're not making a game, then you're not entirely sure what the next step to making your engine should be. Do I need this feature? Do I need that feature? Instead of arbitrarily just making a game engine, which is probably one of the worst ideas in this world, by the way, for the record. Instead, what you could do is just simply try and make a game and then you'll easily see what features you're missing or features that you would like to actually add to your game engine to make that game creation a lot easier. Now, Hazel is... <laughs> the public branch of Hazel, as it stands right now, is just barely an engine at all. If you just go to GitHub right now and you check out what is in the public repository, it's barely like a 2D renderer with an event system and like just some kind of basic application run loop and some layers. It doesn't have any tools like an editor or anything like that. It's very, very bare bones. No scripting, everything has to be done in C++, all of that kind of stuff. Now I have a development branch that is way more advanced. It's got like a 3D renderer and it's got like a, a, a tools around it and all of that stuff. But what I'm gonna do today is attempt to make a game in as little time as possible using the public version of Hazel. And specifically, I'll link the, the GUID or the commit ID of Hazel publicly that I'll be using so that in the future you can look back and see, well, this is what Hazel was like at this point in time. For two reasons. First of all, to prove that even though Hazel is extremely bare bones, you can still definitely make a game with it. And also to see what on earth we need to add. I mean, it's pretty clear to me what we need to add, like the rest of the engine is barely done at all. But in general, it should at least give us like a list of actual bullet points of I want this feature, I want that feature, I want etc. So now we just need a quick game idea that won't take us too long. Hang on a minute, what's this video? Making a game in one hour. One hour. Okay, so a few days ago, this guy called Danny uploaded a video of him making a game in Unity in one hour. It's basically like a little Flappy Bird clone. If he made this in one hour in Unity, I mean, I don't think we're gonna make it in one hour in Hazel. I'm gonna try my best here, but in all seriousness, I think we should be able to make it in Hazel pretty quickly, even though Hazel's missing all of these features. I mean, one hour, how hard could it be? So the first thing I actually wanna do is look at this video. I'm gonna take notes here and see everything that we actually need to do for this game. And then I'm gonna start a timer and I'm gonna try and make this same game in my own engine in Hazel as fast as possible. Let's take a look at this video. Okay, so Trello for task handling, it's an hour. I'm just gonna use pen and paper. And in fact, like I don't have any time to spend at all on anything other than literally probably writing half of the engine. Then I slapped the rocket into Unity and gave it physics. Okay, well there's our first little problem. We can get that rocket sprite into Unity. Hazel handles textures like, I mean, normally, but we, we don't have any kind of physics engine. Okay, so I guess maybe we'll make spacebar control the rocket by just kind of tilting it up and giving it some kind of force there. Obviously, Hazel, without having any kind of physics engine at all, we're just gonna have to add something really basic. I think it's probably reasonable to assume that we can just recreate this exact effect by just having like a position and a velocity and then some kind of gravity simulation and then, you know, pressing and holding spacebar just adds to the positive Y velocity. That's honestly probably all we need. Nothing like a, we don't need a physics engine for this. Ha! The Unity particle system. I'll just use the Hazel particle system. Oh, wait. So, particles is... I mean, particles are gonna be probably one of the biggest things, I think, that, well, that I've seen so far anyway in this video. Because to have particles and, I mean, there's just smoke particles. They look pretty simple, though. Um, we just have... It looks like we have smoke of varying sizes and then it kind of grows over time. It rotates. We might make a simplified version of that. We'll see how far we get and then maybe we can tweak it later. Okay, so that's the first kind of example of collision detection. Um, that was pretty easy though. That was just like, you know, colliding two rectangles together. That's easy to do. Okay, so random map generation. That's easy to do. Triangles. 
don't think Hazel can actually draw triangles at the moment. And furthermore, we also have the additional problem of colliding with triangles. Doing collision detection between rectangles and triangles is a little bit more involved than between rectangles and rectangles. So we're probably going to ha have to add some kind of collision detection code um, to detect collisions between uh, a rectangle and a triangle. At this rate, I think that we can just... Well, it's just Flappy Bird, so if the ship is at all... If any of the vertices of the ship is intersecting inside the triangle, if it's inside the triangle, we can just use a pretty simple algorithm, I think, to, to basically detect each of the four vertices being inside a triangle. If it's inside a triangle, then that's a collision, and we can just set game over. So I think that's pretty simple. We'll have to add that in, though. Of course, we have no collision detection of physics at all in Hazel. So he's added a bunch of post-processing effects. <laughs> What have I gotten myself into? Okay, so post-processing effects, Hazel has none of that at all. Um, I mean, honestly, I, it looks like what he's got maybe... I don't even know if there's any post-processing effects here that I can see. I mean, okay, so he's got the... Okay, the colors dynamically change. It looks like it's kind of hard to tell, but I think that there might be a ever so subtle glow on the actual triangle on the level, basically. It's kind of projecting a little bit like that, maybe, I can't tell, it actually could just be the vignette. Um, as if I have to make this harder for myself, let's just assume that the triangles are glowing, because I think that's kind of cool. Um, I mean, if that was done in Unity, it's probably just done by using like an HDR buffer and adding some bloom. Um, we don't have that in Hazel at all, and whilst I could add that in, I think that would be a little bit cheating, because I'd have to modify a lot of engine code to make that happen. And then also, I kind of think that I should just be able to fake it basically by just using a textured triangle that has a bit of glow added to it in Photoshop. Okay, so camera following player... Huh, displaying the score. Okay, so UI. We don't have UI. Um, we can probably just fake that with I am GUI maybe by getting it to draw directly to the screen buffer. Okay, so resetting and stuff. Oh, okay, here we go, there we go. Now there's definitely glow on this. I can definitely see glow happening on the triangles. And there's also a bit of a hue shift going on. And there's more particles with the flames. Flames. Okay, so I'm just gonna say <laughs> two things that we're not gonna do at all, or one thing we're not gonna do at all is audio. There's just not going to be any time. Um, Hazel doesn't support audio at all. So we're just going to kind of ignore audio. As much as that pains me because I, I, love, I love music. We're not going to do any music. We're not going to write any music. And we're not going to um, do any audio sound effects at all. Because that's just not going to happen. Um, it's just going to be way too much work. And again, way too much modifying the engine code to make that happen. So that took him an hour. And the game's available on Android. Okay, well, that's that's cross-platform support's also not happening. Okay, so let's summarize. We have basically a Flappy Bird clone. Um, that in itself is pretty easy to make. Uh, we don't really need to add anything to the engine at all. Um, the biggest thing that is uh, important to the core mechanic, though, because physics, I mean, the physics that he's using is basically not physics at all. I mean, there is a little bit of, like, ragdoll effect when it hits, like, um, like a triangle, and it's kind of, like, it hits part of the level, it's game over, it kind of, the ship just um, lies around, but we'll just skip that, because who cares, people are going to want to play the game again if they lose, probably, instead of admire the physics, I hope. Um, so we can kind of skip the physics, but we do need some kind of gravity and um, simulation there for when we actually interact with the rocket. Um, and then collisions, the other important thing to the core game mechanic. We obviously need to be able to detect a collision between the actual player ship and the level terrain. Um, and then if that obviously uh, collides, then we need to be able to set the state to game over and blah, 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 um, and restart the game. Now, everything else, um, in terms of features that Hazel does not support, everything else is kind of aesthetical. Um, don't get me wrong, we're still gonna do them. Um, but the biggest things there are gonna be the particle system and then this kind of bloom effect. But the bloom effect uh, is just going to be, I'm just going to basically make that texture in Photoshop um, and then apply that uh, to a textured quad in Hazel and then we'll apply like a hue shift effect as well to get that to pulsate different colors like um, he had as well. So that's kind of the plan. 
Uh, I think the only other problem that I can think of is if we do in fact make the triangle a textured quad, then it's gonna be a quad. We need to be able to somehow pinpoint the vertices within that quad of the actual triangle, like drawing, so that we can collide with it. That's probably gonna be the most it's probably gonna be the hardest part that I can think of right now. Everything else, pretty straightforward. Writing a particle system in like 20 minutes is also gonna be a little bit of a challenge, but you know what? Let's just see what we can do. So, um, I'm gonna start a timer and then we're going to basically uh, see how long this actually takes. All right, so the first thing that we need to do, of course, is obtain the latest version of Hazel. I'll have a link to this exact commit, this exact GUID in the description below so that you can check out what version of Hazel I started with. I'm just gonna clone that into a directory on my computer. Make sure, of course, to do a clone recursive so that you obtain all of the submodules as well. And now let's just try and build the projects and run it so that we can see what our starting point is. At this stage, Hazel just kind of has this little, like, sandbox of just some textures that we were doing from the previous episodes. We're just gonna take that, strip everything out, make our own game layer, and that'll kind of be our starting point for this game. So the first real thing that I'm gonna do is set up my camera. So unlike Unity, where you can just resize the window and everything will be the best, in Hazel, at the moment, everything's kind of done manually, so you have to actually catch a resize event and then resize the camera to like the right aspect ratio so that nothing's stretched. So I'm just setting that up right now so that I don't have to worry about it in the future. It's just a simple orthographic camera and I've just arbitrarily chosen my total width to be 20 units. Okay, so with the camera set up, I think the next step is gonna be to create some kind of level and player. So if we talk about the architecture of this a little bit, I mean, we don't have any kind of entity component system or components or anything like that. Literally, we're gonna have to make some kind of player class to contain all of the data and logic for the actual player because we're gonna have to like do the controls and the collision and you know the, the assets to do with the player such as the texture, which is the rocket ship. But then we also are gonna have to have some kind of level um, container, I guess, which contains both the player and then all of the actual triangles that make up the terrain because um, having some kind of class that contains that means we can obviously access that data to do stuff like collision detection as well as render everything. We'll have to randomly generate all of that level as well. So that'll all come from the level class. So in other words, game layer will have a level and level will have a player. And that's kind of the hierarchy I'm thinking of right now. So I'm just putting together those classes now, adding a position and a velocity for the player and just a bunch of functions that I'll call from game layer. And with that basic skeleton set up, it's time to open up Photoshop and take a look at this ship texture. Looks like a really simple texture, maybe like about 16 by 16. I'm just gonna copy it directly in the interest of time and of course trying to replicate, I guess, what he's made there as well. I made mine a tiny bit shorter and of course I added that Cherno logo in there so that it's legit. And now taking a look at that in Hazel after removing this weird tiling thing that was in the shader, we have our ship. Now we just need to make sure that we render our quad at the correct aspect ratio because our ship texture is of course not square. And there we go. Let's try and hook in some input here. So I'm just making the space bar basically increase the vertical velocity. And after some tweaking, we have some nice quote unquote physics. It was really nice to use I am GUI here to help tweak these values. And now we run into our first real problem with the engine. We need to be able to draw a rotated quad, but we can't apply any kind of rotation to the quads that we draw, textured or not. That's obviously gonna be a problem because we want our ship to rotate up and down depending on its vertical velocity. So I'm kind of cheating here and quickly adding in another draw quad function, which will also apply a rotation to the quad. Now we have perfect rota- whoa, that looks really weird. Oh yeah, that's right, we need to convert into radians. And so with a bit more tweaking, we have a much better result. Now tweaking is really gonna be the killer here. I think if you continually just spend all of this time tweaking values, which is really where the majority of the time to make such a game is probably gonna go, we're gonna get nowhere. So I'm gonna accelerate past this. So the next step is gonna be to add in some terrain and I also want to make sure that I have that top and bottom boundary. I'm just gonna use quads for now to just make sure that I have that continual generation working. Obviously I don't want to generate an infinite amount of quads. All I wanna do here is basically have about five I've chosen and then simply reuse those old ones again once the ship has advanced far enough forward. 
All right, and that's looking pretty good. Now let's replace them with triangles. Now, as mentioned earlier, we do want to eventually achieve that glow effect. So because of that, I'm not gonna add any kind of triangle rendering to Hazel. I'm actually still gonna render it as a quad, but I'm gonna make it a textured quad. And for now, my texture is just gonna be a simple white triangle, but eventually the plan is to add a glow effect to it. And after fixing up some blending issues that we encountered as a result of the rendering order, our game looks like this. If only those triangles were a little bit more random, I hear you say. Well, don't worry, we're just gonna head over to Stack Overflow and generate some random numbers in C++. I've just written a really basic random class because I know that I'm gonna wanna reuse this throughout the game. That's another great feature that game engines should have, of course, is a random number generator. Anyway, after giving it a quick test, we're ready to move on. Just adding some really simple randomization to these triangles gives us a really nice effect here. And now it's time for us to work on the thing that I've been putting off, the thing that I'm bound to hate most in this entire process, and that is the collision detection. Now, what we have here, the basic collision, um, ignoring the kind of top and bottom because that's super easy, is between a rectangle and a triangle. Now, we don't need to know like which side it collided with or react like in a physically based way or anything like that. All we really need to do is just take the rectangle, the chord that makes up our player, take each vertex and see if any of those vertices are inside any of the triangles on the screen. And if they are, then that's it. There's a collision. We can just say collision equals true, game over equals true. And basically just that, that and that's, that's just it. The other thing that makes this especially complicated is that we're not actually rendering triangles, we're rendering quads with like a triangle kind of texture with this padding on the outside. The reason we're doing that of course is so that we can add in that glow effect eventually. Now the problem is that we are interested in the actual triangle vertices within that texture. So we need to kind of manually look at that actual texture and see how far inward those vertices actually lie. So in this case, I've just used Photoshop and Photoshop's rulers to measure every vertex there being exactly 10% into the texture. So what I can do is just basically manually offset that vertex of every triangle by 0.1. And that's possible, of course, because every quad in Hazel is just one by one unit. So an offset of 0.1 translates to 10%. So then what I've done here is basically just taken all of those vertices and transformed them based on the transformation matrix of the player and all the triangles. And then the idea is to just check whether or not any of the player vertices lie within any of the triangles, every single frame, which might seem really inefficient, but to be honest, there's only 10 total triangles at any given time and the player is only four vertices, so it should be absolutely fine. And then just to check to make sure that I've done everything correctly, I'm just rendering all of the vertices here as red quads. Okay, so now back to Stack Overflow to see if we can find a little algorithm or really just an equation that will help us determine whether or not a given point is inside a triangle. And once we've got that, it's just a matter of seeing whether or not any of those player vertices are inside a triangle. And then what I'm doing here is just rendering this red quad if there's a collision. And that's basically it. After adding some basic logic to just reset everything, if there is a collision, our core game is basically done. Actually, hang on, wait a minute. We also need to know what the player's score is, but that's really just a function of the player's X position. Let's try and kind of insert this into I am GUI somehow so that we can get our score rendering since we have absolutely no UI in Hazel, as well as getting the camera to follow the player. And now we're truly done. Here's some amazing gameplay from what we were able to achieve in Hazel. Okay, there we go. An hour, two seconds, an hour, two minutes, and 58 seconds. So right about an hour, and that's what I've managed to achieve inside Hazel. So not much, I know, but we've got the, the kind of core loop, the core game mechanic going. The other, the other stuff that we actually need to add is mostly just things like particles and uh, the glow effect and the hue shift and stuff that isn't really that important to core gameplay. Also the gameplay loop and all of that. But I think that in general, um, if we just reflect upon this specific hour and where I spent most of that, I think that a lot of it was to do with the fact that there is no actual GUI kind of level editor within Hazel. So everything had to kind of be done through code. I had to just play around with numbers a lot and tweak values a lot by actually restarting things. I'm GUI definitely helped with that because I was able to live edit values instead of having to continually recompile the C++ code. But in general, it would have been way easier if I could just kind of place things around visually. The other thing was the collision detection. Implementing the collision detection was I don't know, I probably spent like 15 minutes or 20 minutes out of the hour on that. That was pretty, that was 
quite huge. So anyway, that kind of stuff is definitely stuff that I would expect to add to Hazel in the future. Um, also having maybe like a scripting language would be quite useful instead of just using C++ for everything. But of course that is within the plan. It just hasn't been done yet. So that's it, done. Hour, two minutes. Kind of not satisfying though, is it? I mean, he had like glowing triangles and, and particles and smoke and fire particles. I think it's only gonna be fair if we kind of just screw the one hour and we keep going with this and we see how long it would actually take to add in a bit of a particle system and get those triangles glowing. So the first thing that I wanna add here is a hue shift effect to all of the triangles. Now the default texture shader in Hazel actually does support color tinting. However, we have no renderer 2D API to do that. So I'm just quickly adding that here. And you can see that we've managed to tint all of the top triangles red. Now in order to actually cycle through all of the hues, for our triangles, we need some kind of HSV to RGB conversion because we still need to actually send an RGB color to the shader. So I'm just grabbing one here. And now once we've got some kind of color pulsing, I also wanna apply that to the top and bottom. With that done, the next step is gonna be to add that glow effect to the triangle in Photoshop. I'm simply going to go into the blending options and just add an outer glow effect and kind of tweak that until I get it to the point that I'm happy with it. And after replacing our original triangle texture with this new glow one from Photoshop, we get this effect, which is looking pretty good. Now in Danny's version, it looks like maybe he added a light in Unity. So there was kind of this smooth fall off, basically like a little vignette. It's pretty easy for us to add that across everything that gets rendered. We can simply calculate the distance from the current pixel in the fragment shader to the center of the screen, and then just multiply that inverse result with our final output color. We can also tweak that a little bit and add a smoother fall off using a square root. <sighs> all right, and now it's the part that you've all been waiting for and that I have basically probably not been waiting for at all, and that is the particle system. Let's quickly write a particle system. Now, honestly speaking, a particle system is not particularly challenging to write at all. If you know how they work and the basic concept behind a particle system, it's dead easy. Now, I had a lot of constraints here, not just time, but also the fact that at the moment, Hazel has absolutely no batching at all, which means that every single quad is rendered as a separate draw call. With that kind of system, it's extremely limiting how many particles you can have on the screen because draw calls are rather expensive. I set the pool here, the maximum particle pool size to be 1000. In fact, that was just the, the, pool, the constant pool size, which means that there can never be more than 1000 particles on the screen at one time. Otherwise they'll simply get reused. So we should never go above a thousand draw calls, which should be okay for most GPUs. I mean, honestly, I think that I was able to get a pretty good result with not much code. Of course, this is not like the best, most efficient way to write a particle system at all. For example, I'm using an array of structures instead of structure of arrays, but that's besides the point. I mean, come on, I wrote a particle system in like half an hour. And with our lovely kind of passive smoke particles out of the way, let's take a look at those engine flames. I went to colorpicker.com here to just pick some colors that I felt were nice looking. And I mean, it's hard not to tweak this too much because honestly, you could just, you could just play around with this like forever. So eventually I just had to kind of stop. And then the other thing that I did was actually make the particles emit from the ship's engine in the bottom there. Honestly, I'm quite happy with the result. And I think this was the most fun thing that I did in this entire game. And finally, just to polish everything off, I wanted to change the UI font to Open Sans. And I just got that from GitHub and also add some basic game state and a UI like click to start. And that's it. Here we have the finished game. Okay, so with the game completed, let's talk a little bit about what happened. And I just realized that I didn't actually continue the timer. So so that took an hour and 10 minutes, roughly. It's hard to kind of keep track of it. And I did have to like go up and get some more water and stuff. So we'll just, we'll say about two and a half hours, two hours, 10 minutes maybe, is how long that whole thing took, just in case you're interested. So I don't really want to have too much of a debrief here because I mean, I just, just gone out this for like two and a half hours and I'm really tired, but I think it kind of went okay. I mean, we were able to actually complete the game within a, a I would say a reasonable time period, especially considering we had to like, you know, write our own particle system. I realize I haven't talked too much about all of the code in detail just because of time constraints, really. I'll have a link in the description below, like a GitHub link to all of the source code for this version of Flappy Bird that I've written, in case you guys wanna check it out. If you wanna see a more in-depth look, kind of like almost line by line at the actual code and how it all works and maybe how I would do it properly and you just wanna hear more discussion on that, let me know, leave a comment below and I might make a video kind of dissecting what I've written here um, and how, both how I think it, what Hazel should have to improve this, but also how I've actually managed to kind of achieve all of the stuff that I've done 
um, within these kind of two and a half hours. There'll also be a link in the description below to Danny's original video where he made the game in one hour using Unity. Anyway, I'm pretty much done here to be honest. Oh, never again. I think it's been super useful to actually take a look at all of this stuff because um, coming away from this, I have a little bit of a more of an understanding as to like the kind of urgent features that Hazel actually needs to be in, in order even to make small games. So I'm definitely gonna spend some time um, probably triaging them and thinking about how we can implement them into the game engine series. If you guys are interested in that, I do have a game engine series in which I'm developing this Hazel engine uh, from scratch. Episode one is literally just the beginning of the project with nothing there at all. And the latest episode at the time of me making this video at least is the actual, actually Hazel of the state that I used it in today to make this game. So if you're interested in that, definitely check that out. I'll have a link in the, in the description to the playlist. It's just the turner.com slash engine for short. If you guys want to help support the Game Engine series and Hazel and all the videos that I make here on this channel, check out patreon.com forward slash the channel. There'll be a link in the description and let me know if you want to see more of these kinds of videos. I really enjoyed making this. I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.